Chapter 411 It isn't a grave. I smell the stench of a corpse. Let's go there and have a look, Gunning said. What, a corpse? Hearing that, they were all surprised that someone had died here but they had seen bodies a lot of times before, so none of them were scared. After that, Lee Mo Zong and his friends followed Gunning walking over. When they stood in front of the body and saw its face, Lee Mo Zong and his friends were astonished. Zhao Leoa. Why did Zhao Leoa die here? Is there really an ancient grave around here? Was he killed by his partners? Zhao Leoa was a grave digger too and he must have come here for the ancient grave after he had heard the news. Let's search around his body, Gunning said. Although she had already found the black hole, she couldn't tell them right away in case it would arouse their suspicion. Hearing that, they immediately started to search around, while Gunning used her jade eyes to see what was inside the black hole. The black hole was three meters ahead of the body and there was a big rock blocking its entrance. Normally people wouldn't know that there was something unusual about it. The black hole was over a dozen meters deep, and it almost reached the bottom of the temple. At the end of it, there was a chamber which was five square meters big, but it was empty. Maybe other gravediggers had already taken all the stuff inside, so there was nothing left in it. However, no other tunnels were extending from the chamber. Was it just a normal grave? However, if it was a normal grave, there should be a coffin. Grave diggers wouldn't steal a coffin. Gunning looked deeper with her jade eyes and saw that something was wrong with the chamber. There was another chamber next to the wall of this chamber, and the wall was only a meter thick. Although the second chamber was also empty, Gunning saw that a grave tunnel extended from it. It seemed that the first chamber was just a cover, and the grave diggers who had come here before them hadn't known that there was more just next to the wall. While nobody was looking, Gunning secretly moved the rock away and a third of the hole showed. Oh, look, here is a hole. Gunning said like she just found it. Li Mo Zong and his friends ran over at once and moved the rock together before he used his flashlight to look inside. This is a grave hole, Li Mo Zong said. Let me get in first, and you can follow behind me, Gunning said, then climbed into the hole. Everyone agreed. Gunning led the team so that she could protect them if anything bad happened. Gunning had promised to do so after all. When they climbed into the hole, Gunning told the last person to move the rock back to cover the hole to prevent others from finding it. The hole was straight and was only a meter tall, so they had to squat when they were inside. Gunning took out her night luminescent pearl, and the black hole was lit up at once. Li Mo Zong's and his friend's flashlights became useless then. Seeing Gunning's night luminescent pearl, Li Mo Zong and his friends were impressed again. However, they had no intention to steal it. No person was 100% good or bad. It was illegal that they dug ancient graves, and it showed that they weren't good people, but they wouldn't murder others and knew how to be grateful. In that case, they were good people to some extent. It all went well as they walked to the chamber, but there was no tunnel ahead. Well, there is no tunnel? Isn't this a grave? Li Mo Zong and his friends were quite disappointed. Gunning used her jade eyes and saw nothing dangerous in the second chamber behind the wall. So she asked Li Mo Zong and his friends, Do you trust me? I have an idea. They were struck dumb for a second, but they all knew that Gunning was talking about this grave. No matter what Gunning was going to do, they would follow her. Miss Gu, I'm willing to follow your lead no matter what you're going to do next. Li Mo Zong said. They now all regarded Gunning as their leader, and they would follow her lead, even if it was risky. Me too. The other three men echoed. Very well. Gunning was satisfied. She then pointed at the wall before them. Dig through that wall. No problem. They didn't ask why, but took out tools and started to dig without delay. The four men were divided into two shifts to dig through the wall. At the same time, Leng Shouting called Gunning when he was free but no one answered. Leng Shouting thought that Gunning must have gone to find the ancient grave, and he was worried. However, all he could do was wait until Gunning called him back. Half an hour later, the one meter thick wall was dug through. Li Mo Zong and his friends were very surprised when they discovered the second chamber. They couldn't believe that Gunning was just lucky, but they knew that it wasn't appropriate for them to ask further. If Gunning said that she only relied on her luck or instinct, then so be it. However, the hole was too small for a person to get through, 
So Li Mozong and Zhao Jiang Kun kept digging till the hole was big enough. Another half an hour later, the hole was big enough for a person to crawl through. There was no need to make a large hole, as long as it was big enough for them to get through. This time, Gunning still moved in the front. A short while later, they arrived at the second chamber. It was cold and damp inside because it had been closed for a long time, but there was no rotten smell in it like the last ancient grave. The second chamber was empty, but there were grave tunnels at both sides. There would be the front door and the third chamber at the ends of the two grave tunnels. Let's see which one is connected to the chamber, Li Mozong said, and moved to the right grave tunnel, while Sun Jia moved to the left one. Gunning, instead, directly used her jade eyes, and saw that the front door was on the left side, while the third chamber was on the right side. Nevertheless, she wouldn't say it of course. This grave consisted of three chambers, and people had to move through the second chamber to the third one. Let's go to the right one. Gunning said. After a few minutes, they arrived at a rock door. Let's open it. Sure, Li Mozong said and went to push the rock door. Unfortunately, it was too heavy. Let me do it. Gunning walked forward, and Li Mozong stepped aside. Gunning pushed the door with her normal strength but failed. Thus, she used her power and improved her strength. Chapter 412 Step Shake Crown With a small sound, the rock door moved, which shocked Li Mozong and his friends. Gunning was unusually strong. Gunning gradually pushed the rock door open. In order to not shock them too much, Gunning intentionally slowed down. After the rock door was pushed open, the group of them walked inside. The third chamber was ten square meters large, but it was still empty. And it had three grave tunnels at its front, left and right side. Which tunnel should we go in first? Zhao Jiang Kun asked. Gunning used her jade eyes and saw that this ancient grave was like a complicated maze. People would easily either lose their sense of direction or reach the same place after walking for a long time. It was hard for normal people to find the main chamber, but Gunning who had jade eyes spotted the main chamber with just a glance. However, they still had to dig through another dirt wall. Follow me. Gunning said and directly walked to the left grave tunnel. After half an hour of twists and turns, they stopped and Gunning said, Here, dig the wall. With the previous experience, nobody doubted her decision. They raised their tools and started to dig through the wall without delay, even though they found it unbelievable. Within half an hour, the one meter thick dirt wall was dug through, and on the other side of the dirt wall was a rock door which was precisely the access to the main chamber. The main chamber had been furnished with a door and was covered with a layer of dirt. If it hadn't been for Gunning, they would never have found this main chamber. If they wanted to open this rock door, they had to remove all the dirt covering the door. The rock door was two meters tall, and one meter wide, which was a big project. So all five of them began to dig together. After two hours, they finally removed all the dirt and Gunning went to push the rock door. However, she failed to push it open this time. Gunning was surprised, and the men also exchanged a glance with doubt. Gunning checked the surroundings and found an iron ring. She immediately lowered her body to pull it, and with a series of sounds, the rock door moved and fell, and the main chamber was revealed in front of their eyes. Because of the night luminescent pearl, the main chamber was lit brightly when they walked inside. It was around 10 square meters large, and there were two coffins laid in the middle with three boxes standing against the wall. Seeing the three big boxes, everyone was excited. The men were eager to open it but stood still waiting for Gunning's permission. Go and open the boxes, Gunning said. Li Mo Zong and his friends then ran to the boxes at once. While Gunning used her jade eyes to see what was in the two coffins. This ancient grave was under the temple, so there was no yin or a moving body here. In the left coffin, the body was already a skeleton and Gunning could only judge which period this man had been from the clothes. He must be an important official in the Tang dynasty according to his purple official uniform. And in the right coffin, the skeleton was wearing a pure red wedding gown with a step shake crown. Seeing the step shake crown. Gunning was stunned. It was so beautiful. Miss Gu, come here and have a look. Li Mozong called her. Hearing that, Gunning left the step shake crown and walked towards them. One of the three boxes was filled with jewelry, another was full of porcelain, while there were many other valuable antiques in the third one. Do you have bags to carry them? 
Gunning asked, yes, they said and took their bags out, the bags were made of special material and they wouldn't tear no matter how sharp the objects inside were, fill two bags with the jewelry, Gunning said, and the men worked, after that, Gunning chose five pieces of porcelain from twelve in the second box and took out eight antiques from twenty or so in the third box, that's all I want, and the rest will be yours, Gunning said, Miss Gu, it's they had agreed to share the antiques in halves, but Gunning gave them more than a half, I can't take so many, Gunning lied, in reality, she wasn't greedy, and there were four of them while she was alone, it wasn't a big deal if they got more than a half, as for the jewelry, Gunning only took two fifths of it, and Li Mansong and the others got the rest, the men all thanked Gunning with sincerity, afterward, they opened the two coffins, Gunning went directly to the right one, while Li Mo Zong and the others went to the left one, there were some books which were written by famous writers in the past in the left coffin, and except for the step shake crown, there were only two pairs of bracelets and other jewelry in the right coffin, you can have whatever is in the right coffin, and I'll take whatever is in this one, Gunning said, sure, everyone agreed, Li Mo Zong and the others didn't know what was in the right coffin, so Gunning directly put the step shake crown into her telepathic eye space, she then put her share of the antiques into a box and fastened it with ropes, Cao Jiang Kun proposed to help Gunning carry the box, but he failed because it was too heavy, however, even if he was able to move it, Gunning wouldn't bother him, because they all had heavy bags to carry, and they were ordinary men after all, while Gunning had practiced kung fu for years, so she was stronger than common people, and she also had her magic power, when they were ready to leave, Gunning guided them along the same way moving smoothly and quickly back outside, after a while, they were all out, Go Ying looked in the direction of the archaeological team and said, well, I bet they'll find nothing this time, yeah, they've searched for a week already, I have sympathy for them, Cao Jiang Kun said, why don't you go and tell them that the ancient grave is here, Sun Zhao joked, I won't, I'd be exposed, I don't want to suffer a double loss, Cao Jiang Kun said, Miss Gu, thank you so much for your help, if it hadn't been for you, we wouldn't have found the ancient grave or gotten these antiques so easily, if we heard anything about ancient graves in the future, would you mind if we called you, and we can share the antiques in halves, Li Mo Zong said, it was a win-win and they would enjoy cooperating with Gunning, Gunning had the same idea and agreed with alacrity, she had accidentally heard the news this time, while Li Mo Zong and the others were professional grave diggers, so they might have more chances, oh, Miss Gu, where are you leaving for, if you didn't drive here, we can give you a ride, Li Mo Zong said out of kindness, a step shake crown is a traditional Chinese bridal headdress, chapter 413 watch horse racing, thanks, but I made my own arrangements, so we can separate when we arrive at the resort, Gunning said, sure, since Gunning had her own plans, they didn't insist, when they had almost arrived at the resort, her phone was able to receive signals again, and Gunning's mobile phone vibrated in her pocket, she took it out and noticed that Leng Shouting had called her, but she didn't call him back right away, because it wasn't an appropriate time, after they separated, Gunning walked towards the villagers living area of Nanzui village, Li Mo Zong and the others thought that she had someone to pick her up there, when Li Mo Zong the others couldn't see her anymore, Gunning put the box into her telepathic eye space and turned back, walking to the resort before she booked a room in a hotel, Gunning didn't call Leng Shouting until she was in the hotel, Leng Shouting answered her call in a second, although it was already 3 a.m., Leng Shouting was still awake because he was worried about Gunning, Ning Ning, Leng Shouting sounded nervous, how is it going, very well, it was an official's grave from the Tang dynasty, and I met Li Mo Zong and the others again, we went into the grave together and we shared the antiques, Gunning said, Leng Shouting didn't care about the antiques at all, the only thing he cared about was Gunning's safety, knowing that she was fine, he finally relaxed, good to know, when will you go back home, in a couple of days maybe, Master Tang knows that I'm in City B, and I've promised to visit him once I'm free, Gunning said, Leng Shouting understood that Master Tang was Gunning's grandpa, and he would love to see that they were close as long as Gunning was willing to be, and Gunning was obviously happy to do so, they chatted for a short while before hanging up, although Leng Shouting was reluctant to hang up, he knew that Gunning needed a good rest, 
Since it was very late, Gunning then took a shower before she went to bed and quickly fell asleep. The next day, Gunning got up around 8 a.m. She went to check out and left for City B. It was still early, and she couldn't visit Tang Haifeng so early in the morning, so she called Pan Zirui instead and invited him to have lunch together. Pan Zirui had just joined her team, so she should seize the chance to spend more time with him. Otherwise, she had no idea when they would meet the next time. Pan Zirui was thrilled to receive Gunning's call. He had an appointment to watch horse racing with his friends and was ready to set off, but he directly abandoned his friends and decided to meet Gunning. Pan Zirui's friends were all astonished when they heard Pan Zirui call another person boss. To their astonishment, Pan Zirui who was always arrogant would regard another person as his boss. When Pan Zirui told them that he changed the plans at the last second, his friends complained a lot. Hearing that, Gunning felt a little guilty to ruin their plans, so she said, well, why don't we get together next time? No. Pan Zirui rejected at once. Where are you now? I'll come to you. I don't think it's a good idea that you abandon your friends like that. Gunning said. I think that you're more important, boss, Pan Zirui said. Hearing that, Gunning was amused. Lord Pan, why don't you invite your boss to watch horse racing together with us? It'll be a shame if you're absent. One of Pan Zirui's close friends said. Hey, boss, wanna watch horse racing with us? Pan Zirui asked Gunning. Gunning understood that if she declined, Pan Zirui would abandon his close friends for her which wasn't something she wanted to see, so she agreed. Pan Zirui proposed to pick Gunning up but was stopped by Gunning. She would take a taxi to meet them on her own. Half an hour later, Pan Zirui and his friends arrived at the horse racing field, but they didn't walk in right away. Instead, they were waiting at its gate. Pan Zirui insisted on waiting for Gunning alone, but his friends chose to wait along with him. There were five young men and five young women in Pan Zirui's group of friends. Men were the leading roles, while the women were just their companions to have fun with. Few of those rich heirs had a serious relationship, and most of them were playing around with many girls. However, not all of them did. Two couples among the group were officially boyfriend and girlfriend. One of the two couples was already engaged and about to get married in a few months. After ten minutes, Gunning was still absent. A woman shivered a little from the cold, then acted pouty to her male companion. Lord Guan, I'm so cold. Obviously, she wanted to walk inside. The young man who was called Lord Guan gave the woman a glance of disdain. The why did you have to wear so little? The woman indeed put on fewer clothes to look sexy, but it was cold in the winter. The woman was angry but didn't dare to say another word. If she annoyed him, she would be dumped. However, someone added fuel to the flame. Nana, didn't you just recover from a cold? You have to take good care of your body. If you catch a cold again, Lord Guan can be affected. You the woman, whose name was Kiao Nana, was mad. How Meng Kai, shut your mouth. What? I'm just telling the truth, How Meng Kai said like she was innocent. You, enough. Pan Zirui hated to hear the women arguing. The two women shut their mouths at once, and their male companions also gave them a warning look, which made them keep quiet. Where there were women, there was a war. The two were the same kind of woman, but they never liked each other. Actually, they didn't get along for a reason. Kiao Nana's male companion, Lord Guan, was better looking than Hao Meng Kai's. Hao Meng Kai had admired Lord Guan first, but Lord Guan only liked women with big boobs. Although Hao Meng Kai's breasts weren't small, they weren't big either, so Lord Guan wasn't interested in her. Meanwhile, a man would never reject a woman who came on to him. Therefore, how Meng Kai had slept with Lord Guan a few times. However, precisely because of that, she was now jealous of Kiao Nana and would seize every opportunity to pick on Kiao Nana. Kiao Nana, on the other hand, had no idea about what had happened between them. How Meng Kai didn't dare to say anything either, because Lord Guan would be mad at her. What was worse, she would lose the man who was the wallet that she had right now too. Although the rich heirs would play around with many women at the same time, they didn't allow their women to sleep with other men. Otherwise, they would abandon them. Chapter 414 Women are troublesome. If they could find a young man with wealth, 
The last thing they wanted to happen was to be abandoned in a short time. Thus, most of them would keep their dirty secrets under the carpet. Forty minutes later, Gunning finally arrived at the horse racing field. Seeing Gunning coming, Pan Zyrui immediately went ahead to welcome her. Hi, boss. When everyone found out that Pan Zyrui's boss was a young girl, they were all shocked. They had thought that Pan Zyrui's boss would be a strong, grown-up man. Unexpectedly, Jesus, did the hell freeze over, or did Lord Pan get possessed by a ghost? None of Pan Zyrui's friends could believe their eyes or ears. Hey, boss, come here and let me introduce you. This is Zhuang Grui, Guan Bin, Gao Yongkeng and Hu Hao. They're all my close friends. Pan Zarui introduces his friends to Ganing. Then he turned to the group of his friends. What are you looking at? This is our boss. Ganing was surprised. Since when did she become his friend's boss all of a sudden? Zhuangrui and the others were stunned. It was insane for them to call a girl boss. Why do they need to call me boss? Ganing asked. They're my best friends, so my boss is their boss. Pan Zarui said and took it for granted although he was as domineering as usual. Zhuangrui and Hu Hao who agreed with Pan Zairui called Ganing their boss at once, but Guan Bin and Gao Yong can refused to do so. Lord Pan, are you crazy to make us call a young girl boss? Guan Bin said with obvious dislike. Don't you despise women? Why did you change your mind so abruptly? It's your own business to call a girl your boss, but I'm not going to do the same thing. Saying that, he looked at Ganing with disdain. In his eyes, Ganing must have trapped Pan Zarui with her beauty. Although he refused to call a girl his boss, he had to admit that Ganing was quite stunning even without makeup. If Pan Zarui didn't force them to call her boss, he would love to spend some time with such a beauty. Exactly, Lord Pan, you can't force us to do the same thing. It's your personal decision to call a girl your boss. Gao Yongkeng had the same attitude as Guan Bin. Yu Pan Zairui was furious because he thought that Ganing had been humiliated. I think that they're right. It's your personal decision and you can't force them to do so. Besides, you didn't ask my opinion either. Ganing interrupted him. Pan Zairui wouldn't listen to anyone but Ganing, so he gave up in the end. Fine, just call her Miss Gu, all right? Hearing that. Everyone was shocked again. Since when did Pan Zairui become so obedient? Let's get inside now. Pan Zairui said, and guided Ganing, walking inside. However, he left his female companion behind. The young woman was mad, especially when Kiao Nana and Hao Meng Kai gave her a gloating glance. As for the other two young women, they never aligned themselves with those gold diggers. Actually, from the beginning to the end, Pan Zairui never mentioned his female companion in front of Ganing. In his eyes, except Ganing, all the other women were as unimportant as accessories. Lord Pan, don't forget me. The young woman raised her voice in annoyance. Just come along yourself. Pan Zairui lost his patience and didn't even turn around for a second. The young woman was raging and hated Ganing to death. In her eyes, Ganing must be a siren who seduced her man. Otherwise, Lord Pan who was well known for his bias against women would never be so gentle and kind to her. Either way, the young woman still had to quickly follow them in her high heels. Ganing, of course, sensed the young woman's unkind look, but she didn't care. As long as the woman stayed away from her, she wouldn't bother to teach her a lesson. Right at this moment, Pan Zairui complained. Women are indeed troublesome. What? Ganing squinted at him with a light sense of danger. Seeing that, Pan Zairui instantly explained, Boss, I didn't mean you. However, once he said it, Pan Zairui felt like it sounded strange. It sounded like he didn't think that Ganing was a woman, so Pan Zairui changed his words. No no, I mean you're not one of those annoying women. Ganing remained quiet. The young woman came to Pan Zairui's side, reaching out her hand to hold his arm. She did that to show her ownership of him. However, just as her hand touched Pan Zairui, he got rid of it without delay. Just walk by yourself, Jiao Jiao. Are you blind or something? Lord Pan is talking with his boss, and you shouldn't interrupt them. How Meng Kai seized every chance to make fun of other women, especially when she said the word boss. She intentionally stressed the sound. However, men could never tell the difference. Exactly, 
Don't you see that I'm talking with my boss? Be quiet, or you can leave. Panzarui indeed failed to sense that Hao Meng Kai was picking on Ganing, but agreed on her criticism towards Xia Zhao. Xia Zhao was so mad, but couldn't say a word to retort. Oh, boss, where are you from? Pan Zairui suddenly asked. He didn't realize that he knew so little about Ganing until now. City F, Ganing said. Hearing that, Guan Bin, Gao Yong, Ken, Kiao Nana, Hao Meng Kai and Xia Zhao showed their disdain. In their eyes, City F was just a small third tier city. Actually, City F wasn't small, but it was barely comparable to City B. The other people in their group weren't that snobbish. They didn't care where Ganing came from and only those self-centered men and women would think that they were better than others. Chapter 415 Kick the man three meters away. When will you go back home? If you're not in a hurry, I can take you to visit some fun places in City B. Banzairui said, I won't be staying here for very long, and I still need to deal with something else too. Gunning said, fine. Panzairui was disappointed. Before the horse racing started, there was a ceremony for the appearance of the riders and horses. The horse racing fans could observe the horses from a close distance and make judgments over the horse's competitive state by the horse's coat color, pace, eyes and amount of sweat. According to the information they collected, senior horse racing fans would then place a bet. At the end of the debut, riders would mount their horses and ride to the gate. That would be the best time to observe the state of the horse. By observing their jogging, People could understand whether the horse was in good condition and whether the horse was satisfied with the condition of the track today. Therefore, when they walked into the field, they didn't immediately go to the VIP room, but instead went to observe their horses. However, they encountered trouble halfway. Oh, isn't this Lord Pan? What? You're bringing your girlfriend and the other woman together here today? Wow, you all get along so well. A man said sarcastically from one side and they all stopped to look at the man. The man was coming towards them along with seven other people. There were four men and four women. The leading man was walking in the front with a cigarette dangling from his mouth. He seemed very proud and rude. What he had said made Pan Zairui furious. Zhao Kanglin, shut your mouth, and don't humiliate my boss. Boss? They were stunned and laughed loudly as if they had just heard a hilarious joke. Ha ha, ha ha, Pan Zairui. Do you mean that this girl is your boss? Zhao Kanglin leered at Gunning. She's pretty. I bet that she's your boss in bed, right? If she's so good, why don't you lend her to me for a couple of days? Hearing that, they laughed loudly again. Even Guan Bin and the others who disliked Gunning were gloating. Gunning was displeased, and she definitely wouldn't tolerate such a humiliation. However, before Gunning could move, Ban Zirui ran forward in anger. Zhao Kanglin. Fu Q. People around them took out their phones to take a video when they saw that there could be a fierce fight. Facing Pan Zairui who was furious, Zhao Kanglin didn't care at all. Pan Zairui, since when can you beat me in a fight? Saying that, he grabbed Pan Zairui's fist and kicked at Pan Zairui's stomach. Pan Zairui wasn't weak, and turned his body to avoid Zhao Kanglin's foot. He then caught Zhao Kanglin's palm before attacking Zhao Kanglin again but Zhao Kanglin escaped away. Security guards heard the noise and ran over. However, before they could stop the two men, Pan Zairui and Zhao Kanglin interrupted. Stay away. There were rules at the horse racing field. If the parties refused security guards getting involved, they wouldn't. However, if anyone was hurt or killed, the horse racing field wouldn't bear any responsibility. After Pan Zairui and Zhao Kanglin had fought against each other for a few minutes, Zhao Kanglin hit Pan Zairui right on his chest, and Pan Zairui was knocked backwards a few steps. Pan Zairui was good at fighting because he fought a lot. However, Zhao Kanglin had served in the army for three years and had been trained professionally. That being the case, Pan Zairui was barely an opponent for Zhao Kanglin. Lord Pan, are you alright? Do you need us to call the ambulance? A security guard walked forward and asked Pan Zairui. Zairui. Are you all right? Zhengwenglui and those who cared about Pan Zairui came to him too. I'm fine. Although he felt great pain from his chest, it was tolerable. In addition, he was already used to it. Gunning took out a porcelain bottle at once and gave it to Pan Zairui. Here, take it. 
Although the power crystal was quite valuable, Ganning was willing to give it to her friend. What is this? Panzarui asked, medicine, Ganning replied. Hearing that, Panzarui took the porcelain bottle, opened it, and directly poured the pills into his mouth. The moment the pills went into his mouth, they melted, and a flow of coldness spread like lightning through his body. It was unusually comfortable. Before long, the pain in his chest was greatly relieved, and Panzai Rui was astonished. Right when he was about to ask Gunning what kind of medicine this was, Gunning had already walked to Zhao Kanglin. Oh, beauty, what? Do you want to follow me after witnessing how weak your man is? Fu Q. Gunning swore at him before she kicked at Zhao Kanglin. Gunning moved so fast and Zhao Kanglin didn't expect that she dared to attack him, so he was heavily hit without being prepared. Ah! Zhao Kanglin was kicked into the air and fell down three meters away. His body even slid a few more meters when he fell, and didn't stop until it knocked into the stairs. Everyone was shocked seeing the scene. What? This young girl just kicked Zhao Kanglin into the air? None of them could believe their eyes because it was so unbelievable. Wow, boss, you're so awesome. Panzarui ran to Gunning and shouted in excitement. Panzarui knew that Gunning was a kung fu master, so he wasn't very shocked, although he was impressed. Hearing Panzarui's voice, the others finally got their mind back. Gunning truly had kicked Zhao Kanglin into the air right in front of their eyes, although it was incredible. They all saw it with their own eyes. Jesus, she is so strong. Everyone had the same thought, and they also believed that Gunning had to be a kung fu master. Zhao Kanglin's friends and security guards all ran to his side. Seeing that his face was pale from the pain and that he could barely move, they all asked, Lord Zhao, are you all right? Hearing the question, Zhao Kanglin was furious. His body was in great pain, and he almost lost his breath. But these people were still asking whether he was all right. If Zhao Kanglin could utter a word now, he would definitely swear at them. Damn it. This damn girl is so powerful. Zhao Kanglin thought to himself, and set himself to get revenge. Luckily, Zhao Kanglin was physically strong too. Otherwise, he would have passed out. Seeing that Zhao Kanglin was badly injured, a security guard called the ambulance at once. Although what happened to Zhao Kanglin had nothing to do with the horse racing field, they couldn't let him die. This time, Guan Bin and the others who had disliked Gunning were totally shocked. They now understood why Pan Zirui regarded her as his boss, and none of them dared despise Gunning anymore, let alone annoy her. Chapter 416 Horse Betting Gunning coldly stared at Zhao Kanglin which terrified him. He couldn't be more familiar with such a sharp look, and ordinary people could never do it. This young girl couldn't be simple. Gunning aimed to scare and threaten Zhao Kanglin. Seeing that he was frightened, Gunning said icily, This is the price of humiliating me. If it ever happens again, you can't bear the result. Although Zhao Kanglin felt threatened by Gunning's power, he hated her to death. Thus, he wouldn't give up on getting revenge on Gunning. He remained quiet just because he was badly injured. Seeing that Gunning was so powerful, a woman from Zhao Kanglin's group felt like she looked familiar. Oh! The woman suddenly said which attracted people's attention. She she is the young girl who rescued the injured female fan at the airport yesterday. The woman pointed at Gunning in excitement. The woman recognized Gunning's face. What? She is the young girl who rescued the injured female fan at the airport yesterday. It's her. Hearing that, those who had heard the news were all surprised. One of them immediately took out his phone and checked the picture. Jesus, it is her. Let's go. Gunning said to Pan Zirui. She disliked the noisy crowd. She walked ahead alone, quickly followed by Pan Zirui. Meanwhile, some people posted videos of their fight on the internet and it went viral again. The videos were attached with a description of their conflict, so the majority supported Gunning. However, there was also a minority who criticized Gunning saying that she was evil. Internet users who had different opinions argued with each other over this popular news. Gradually, criticisms of Gunning's behavior became fewer and fewer. Gunning, on the other hand, didn't care about it at all because she knew that what she had done was right. Boss, do you play horse betting? Panzarui asked. No, Gunning said. Then, Panzarui introduced horse betting to Gunning. In each race, there would be 12 horses. Before the race started, punters would choose a horse which was most likely to win, 
and fill its number along with the amount they wanted to bet on the horse racing lottery ticket, then they handed it to the service counter for recording. After the race was over, if the result was the same as the punter's bet, punters would get a reward according to the betting ratio. In addition, there were many types of betting in horse racing. Winman punters placed the bet that their chosen horse would come first in a race. Placement punters placed the bet that their chosen horse would be any one of the top three horses in a race. Quinella man punters placed the bet that their chosen horses would be the first and second horses in a race. Trio man punters placed the bet that their chosen horses would be the top three horses in any order in a race. Apart from those, there were many other types of betting, like first four, quartet, tiss and so forth. If punters thought that it wasn't fun enough to bet on only one race, they could choose to bet on different races in a group, which was called all up. Simply by placing bets in the same or different betting pools for two to six races, any dividend entitlement from a winning leg would be automatically carried forward and reinvested in the subsequent legs specified in the punter's bet selection. To experience the betting entertainment and increase the challenge, Punters might also consider the multi-race pools or pools with a possible jackpot. A punter could win several million yuan from a race by that. Gunning, with her jade eyes, easily distinguished the good horses from the bad ones, but it was still difficult to know the results, because their results could be arranged beforehand. Boss, which horse are you going to bet on? I can place the bet for you, Panzai Rui said to please Gunning. Thanks, I'll do it myself. Gunning declined. She wasn't willing to let men, other than Leng Shouting, pay her bills. Since Gunning declined, Pan Zirui wouldn't insist. He knew that Gunning was rich. Lord Pan, place a bet for me, please. Xia Zhao said, acting cute in front of Pan Zirui. However, this time, she did it not because of Gunning, but because Guan Bin and Gao Yongkeng had both placed bets for their female companions. Xia Zhao didn't want to be the odd one out or she would be laughed at by other women. Fine, just give me your lottery ticket after you fill it in. Panzarui didn't reject her. He had spent a lot of money on women, and didn't care about a bet. With Panzarui's permission, Xia Zhao was excited and ran to get a lottery ticket to fill. She of course knew nothing about horse betting, so she understood that she was just wasting money for fun. In reality, Xia Zhao didn't have much money, because the rich heirs would only buy expensive bags, clothes, and make up for her, but seldom gave her cash. What betting types do you usually choose? Gunning asked Pan Zirui. I think the others are complicated, so I chose win, and I bet on number 5, Pan Zirui said. He thought that the number 5 horse was most likely to win. He had no idea how to make good judgments about the horse's competitive state by the horse's coat color, pace eyes and sweating. He simple made his decision randomly. I don't think that number 5 is a good choice. Instead, number 4, 7 and 10 are more likely to win, Gunning said. Although she was giving Pan Zirui hints, she wouldn't force him to follow her opinion because she wasn't 100% sure she was right. In Pan Zirui's eyes, Gunning was almighty. Since Gunning said so, he would definitely follow her lead. Even if they lost. He wouldn't blame Gunning. Gunning didn't avoid Pan Zirui and directly wrote down the numbers she bet on. She bet on all of the numbers that she had chosen, because she was more likely to win in that case. It didn't cost much to lay bets, and the odds were high. If Gunning won only half of the bets, she could make over 10 million yuan in the end. Boss, can I place the same bets as yours? Pan Zirui asked. Sure. Gunning didn't mind. She wrote the numbers down right in front of him in order to let him follow her. Thanks. Panzarui copied Gunning's lottery tickets. If they fail, don't blame me, Gunning said. Punters are people who gamble, place bets, or make risky investments. Chapter 417 To the Tang Family Of course not, Panzarui said. He could afford the result anyway. The rest of the people in their group were all busy filling in their lottery tickets and had no idea that Pan Zirui copied Gunnings. After placing their bets, they went to the VIP room together. The VIP room was large and could accommodate around 20 people. The front side of the VIP room was a glass wall, so they were able to see through it to the outside. Other than that, there were six LED screens on the left wall, which showed different parts of the track, so they could clearly watch the races. Given what had just happened, 
Guan Bin and the others remained quiet the entire time. Pan Zirui, on the other hand, was busy serving Ganing. He poured a cup of tea for her and asked whether she liked the desserts. Ganing was amused, but he was a member of her team, not her servant. All right, I'm not a kid, and you don't need to take care of me. The race is about to begin. I think you should focus more on your horses. Hearing that, Pan Zirui left Ganing alone and went to watch the competition. Although he didn't care about the result, it was an exciting experience to watch the horse racing. Ready, go. Twelve horses dashed ahead under the guidance of jockeys. The host was explaining and commenting along the way, and his voice was spread to every corner of this field by amplifiers. Some horses led the race in the beginning, but gradually fell behind, while some ran relatively slower when the race had just begun and sped up suddenly after a while. Number seven was the horse that Gunning bet on. It was running steadily in the middle of the horses, and when it had finished two-thirds of the track, it began to outpace all the other horses in front of it, and finally left them far behind. Ah, number seven, number seven, number seven. Panzarui jumped up in excitement, shouting number seven. It was highly possible that number seven would win. In the end, the number seven horse was the first one to cross the finish line, followed by number four which was followed by number ten in the race. Panzarui was thrilled and looked Tiganing with great admiration. Boss. You're so awesome. Hearing that, everyone found out that Pan Zirui had placed the same bets as Gunning, and they all admired her when the results were revealed. All in all, Gunning won half of her bets, and made 10 million yuan. However, Guan Bin and the others all lost. It was the first time that Pan Zirui had ever made so much money from horse racing, and he was very shocked. The host of this horse racing was also astonished that Gunning and Pan Zirui both won such a large amount of money. And they were so young. Actually, if they had placed higher bets, they would have made a lot more money. When Pan Zirui and Gunning went to get their rewards, they were surrounded by other people in the field. If it hadn't been for Pan Zirui's identity, many would run over and ask every detail of their bets. Afterwards, they left together. Pan Zirui was excited because he made a fortune that day, so he decided to pay all the bills no matter where they were going to have fun in the following hours. Unfortunately, Gunning had something else to deal with, so she wouldn't go with them. Pan Zirui was disappointed, but he didn't insist since Gunning was busy. Pan Zirui proposed to give Gunning a ride, but she declined. Before she left, Gunning reminded Pan Zirui to be careful because she had a feeling that Zhao Kanglin would come to him soon. Pan Zirui also knew that Zhao Kanglin was mean and cruel, so he would go somewhere that Zhao Kanglin wouldn't dare to cause trouble. After they separated, Gunning called Tang Haifeng. Tang Haifeng was more than happy to receive Gunning's call. Girl Gu, are you free now? Yes, so I called you Grandpa. Would you mind coming out to have dinner with me this afternoon? Gunning invited. Of course. But I don't feel well today. Can you visit me at my home and we can share dinner together then? Tang Haifeng wanted Gunning to go to the Tang family's house, so he lied. He already regarded her as his granddaughter, and he wanted her to visit his home. Gunning understood that Tang Haifeng was lying, but she had also had the thought of visiting the Tang family's house. They were a family after all, and she was curious to meet other members in the Tang family to see whether they were easy going. Gunning didn't want Guman to be bullied in the future. Sure. Gunning agreed. Hearing that, Tang Haifeng was excited. Where are you right now? I can send a chauffeur to pick you up. Gunning told Tang Haifeng her location. Coincidentally, the horse racing field wasn't far from the Tang family's house and it only took half an hour of driving to get there if there were no traffic jams. While she was waiting, Gunning went to a hidden place to take her suitcase out of her telepathic eye space. She was on a trip, and it would be strange if she didn't have any suitcases. She also needed to take something out in the Tang family's house, and it wouldn't be convenient to do it there. Half an hour later, a car stopped in front of Gunning. The person who came to pick Gunning up was called Tang Wen. Miss Gu, nice to meet you. Tang Wen got out of the car and greeted Gunning. Nice to meet you too, Uncle Tang, Gunning said. Tang Wen was 35 years old, so she called him her uncle. Tang Wen went to open the car door for Gunning first, and then put her suitcase in the trunk. The Tang family was the number one richest family in City B, 
and they lived in an old house with a long history. Although the old house was located a little far from downtown, it was priceless because of its history. There were many high-end villas around it too. The Tang family's house was old, but it had already been rebuilt and expanded. Now, the Tang family's house was nearly 2,000 square meters and most of it was covered by green plants. The main living building in the enormous house was around 600 square meters. Such a priceless house with a long history was rare, but not the most luxurious one, because not every rich person would live in a luxurious house to match his identity. Some rich people loved to keep a low profile. When the car had just driven through the gate of the Tang family's house, Gunning saw Tang Haifeng waiting outside the main living building. The car passed the front garden and stopped in front of the main living building. A domestic servant went to open the car door, and Gunning stepped out. Seeing Tang Haifeng, Gunning teased. Grandpa, I thought you weren't feeling well. Why did you not stay inside, but instead came out to welcome me? Master Tang understood that Gunning was joking, but he didn't feel embarrassed at all. Well, you caught me, but I simply wanted you to visit me at home. Gunning smiled gently but didn't say anything. Chapter 418 We're a family, come on in. It's cold out here, Tang Haifeng said. Gunning then walked over and supported Tang Haifeng walking inside. Grandpa, how's your body recently? Gunning asked with concern. Very good. Thanks to your help, I am already cured of heart disease, and I'm getting stronger, it's as if I'm 20 years younger now. Saying that, Tang Haifeng was more than happy. The elderly cared about their physical condition the most, and nobody wanted to be tormented by diseases. When they entered the hall and had a seat, cups of tea, fruits, and desserts were already placed on the table. Golgu, have some fruits and desserts if you like. Just take this as your own home. We will probably have dinner a little late because I invited your uncles to join us tonight, Tang Haifeng said. Sure, no problem. Gunning replied. She was looking forward to meeting Tang Yunfan. Although she had seen his picture, she would love to meet him in person. At this time, the housekeeper, Quain Boang, came out with a plate of freshly baked dessert. When his sight fell on Gunning, he was quite surprised. This girl's features indeed closely resemble Lord Tang's when he was young. The housekeeper had served the Tang family for over twenty years, and he was in his fifties now so he naturally knew what Tang Yunfan had looked like at a young age. Quain Boang had a good impression of Gunning after he saw her in person and noticed that she greatly resembled Tang Yunfan. Actually, he also hoped that Gunning could be Tang Yunfan's daughter. In that case, Tang Yunfan wouldn't be alone throughout this lifetime. Golgu, this is our housekeeper, you can just call him Uncle Quain. Tang Haifeng introduced to Gunning. Nice to meet you, Uncle Quain. Gunning said politely, standing up to greet Quain Boang. Nice to meet you too, Miss Gu. Please have a seat, Quain Boang replied. After chatting with Tang Haifeng for a short while, Gunning left for the bathroom. A young man ran into the hall from outside shouting, Grandpa, I'm home. Seeing Tang Jiakai being so naughty, Tang Haifeng scolded him. Don't run so fast. What if you knocked into someone? Tang Jiakai indeed almost knocked the housekeeper over when he was running inside. Tang Jiakai rubbed his head in embarrassment. I'm sorry, I won't do it again. Saying that, Tang Jiakai glanced round the room, but didn't see Gunning. He was very disappointed. Grandpa, didn't you say that my younger sister is home? Where is she? He ran home the moment his grandpa told him that Gunning was in the Tang family's house. However, when he came back in a hurry, he didn't see any girl, so he thought that maybe his grandpa felt bored and trapped him into coming home. Tang Jiakai had never met Gunning before, but Gunning already impressed him from Tang Haifeng's description, and he would love to have her as his younger sister. Meanwhile, Tang Jiakai felt nervous because he wasn't sure whether Gunning would like him as her older brother. Tang Jiakai always wanted a young sister. Unfortunately, he only had an older female cousin. Besides, his older female cousin wasn't adorable at all, because she grew up in the military base and always bullied him. Although he had also been trained in the military base for a few years and knew how to defend himself, he was barely comparable to Kao Wenxin, who was his older female cousin. Of course, that was just their way of getting along with each other. It didn't mean that Kao Wenxin disliked Tang Jiakai, 
Although she often bullied him, Cao Wenxin had wanted to serve in the army or the police, but the Cao family wouldn't allow her to do so. Those were dangerous jobs, and Cao Wenxin was too impulsive to be a soldier or a policewoman. Therefore, Cao Wenxin was still unemployed right now, and felt adrift. Anyway, the Cao family and the Tang family were very rich, and she was able to live an affluent life without doing anything. Thus, her family didn't care whether she had a job or not. She's in the bathroom, Tang Haifeng said. Hearing that Gunning was here, Tang Jiakai was cheered up. The second that Tang Jiakai sat down, Gunning walked out. When their eyes met, both of them were struck dumb. Gunning recognized Tang Jiakai at first glance. Tang Jiakai, on the other hand, thought that Gunning looked quite familiar. Oh, it's you. Tang Jiakai rounded his eyes in shock and abruptly stood up in excitement. Hearing that, Tang Haifeng was curious. Jiakai, do you know Girl Gu? Gunning thought that he must have read some news about her on the internet, because they had never met before. She was right. Tang Jiakai didn't have time to answer Tang Haifeng's question, but directly asked Gunning. Did you rescue an injured girl at the airport yesterday? And did you kick Zhao Kanglin meters away at the horse racing field today? And did you win all the bets and make 10 million yuan within a day? Hearing what Tang Jiakai had said, Tang Haifeng was astonished too. He heard the news of the stampede at the airport, but he had heard nothing about the horse racing field. It was also shocking news that Gunning was able to make 10 million by horse betting. Tang Jiakai didn't read the news of horse racing field on the internet, he heard it from his friend. The young heir of the horse racing field was Tang Jiakai's good friend, and he told Tang Jiakai everything. Unexpectedly, the girl who became famous in the horse racing field in a day was Gunning, and she was in Tang Jiakai's home now. Yes, it was me. Gunning smiled. Gunning didn't show any pride or arrogance, because it was no big deal for her. Jesus, you're so awesome! Tang Jiakai exclaimed. He now really admired Gunning, then he laughed. Ha ha. If Ouyang and my other friends find out that the girl who shocked them is my younger sister, they will be so jealous. Ouyang was the young heir of the horse racing field. Ouyang Sayuan. Tang Jiakai didn't feel awkward at all when he said my younger sister, but Gunning was surprised. Tang Jiakai indeed treated her like she was a member of his family. It also showed that Tang Jiakai was amiable. After that, Tang Jiakai stared at Gunning with anticipation. My younger sister, call me your older brother. Chapter 419 Younger Sister Protects Older Brother. Although Gunning wasn't used to calling him her brother yet, she still did it in order to not upset him. Older brother, Gunning said. Ha ha, I have a younger sister now. Since you already call me your older brother, I'll protect you from now on. Tang Jiakai laughed out loud, but suddenly he realized he was wrong. Oh, number. I think it's you who should protect me, because Kao Wenxin is such a bad girl. She'll come later, and probably bully me once more. You must protect me. Please, Tang Jiakai Kozi dupped Gunning without hesitation, as if Gunning was his boss, instead of his younger sister. Ha ha. Gunning snorted with laughter. She thought that Tang Jiakai was quite funny. Tang Jiakai. Tang Haifeng snapped at him. Tang Jiakai didn't think that it was a big deal and argued. Grandpa, why don't you tell Kao Wenxin to stop bullying me? Tang Haifeng was annoyed but didn't say a word. If he could stop Kao Wenxin who was a spoiled, naughty girl, he would have done it already. Please, help me. Without Gunning's answer, Tang Jiakai didn't give it up. Fine, Gunning said. Actually, she was curious to meet Tang Jiakai's older female cousin. Seeing Tang Haifeng being irritated, Gunning immediately changed the topic. Grandpa, Happy New Year, where is my red envelope? Saying that, she held out her hands for the red envelope. Tang Haifeng was amused. Ha ha, you're so rich now do you still want my red envelope? Although Tang Haifeng was joking, he took out the red envelope at once. Well, you're my grandpa. It's different. I want good luck from you, Gunning said with a smile when she got the red envelope from Tang Haifeng. I won't take red envelopes from those who I don't care about. Gunning wasn't lying. Either way, Tang Haifeng felt touched. Gunning didn't open the red envelope right in front of Tang Haifeng, but she used her jade eyes to see what was inside. There was a bank card in it, but Gunning didn't know how much money there was in the account. Anyway, 
it would probably be a lot. Gunning took out the red envelope that she was going to give as a gift to Master Tang too. That was the way of socializing. Grandpa, I've prepared a New Year gift for you too. Gunning said and walked to her suitcase. What is it? Tang Jiakai and Tang Haifeng were both curious. Tang Haifeng understood that the gift had to be special. In fact, no matter what Gunning sent to him, he would take it with pleasure. He was only worried that Gunning would send him a very expensive gift, and he would feel guilty to accept it. It won't be a surprise if I directly tell you, so you need to open it yourself, Gunning said. She opened her suitcase and took out a medium-sized paper box. Then she walked back to Tang Haifeng and handed the present to him. Tang Haifeng took it with curiosity and placed it on the table. Tang Jiakai came closer at once. The box was opened, and there was an object trapped in a red cloth. Tang Haifeng cautiously unwrapped the red cloth, and was amazed to see what was inside. This this is a Sankai camel from the Tang dynasty. Tang Haifeng recognized it at first sight, and he believed that it had to be real since it was a gift from Gunning. This Sankai camel was precisely one of the antiques Gunning had taken out from the ancient grave yesterday. Tang Sankai was a versatile type of decoration on Chinese pottery using glazes or slip, predominantly in the three colors of brown, green, and a creamy off-white. It was particularly associated with the Tang dynasty. This Sankai camel was 87 centimeters tall and 61 centimeters wide. It had double humps with one leaned left and the other leaned right. The whole body was mainly brown glaze, with different shades of green, white and yellow colors in between. The camel headed up and the sacks were hung between the two beaks. Both sides of the bags were hung with toes, kettles, flat pots water bladders, and so forth. Tang Jiakai knew nothing about antiques, but he also knew that it was Tang Sankai. Wow, it must an antique from the Tang dynasty. It must be expensive. You're so generous, Tang Jiakai said to Gunning. Gunning smiled. Not really. I accidentally found it and it turned out to be real. Gunning didn't want Tang Haifeng to feel guilty, because she didn't spend much money on it. Moreover, she also told Tang Haifeng that it was real in case he had doubts. Nevertheless, I think this Sankai camel is too valuable. Tang Haifeng still didn't think that he should accept this gift which was worth at least dozens of millions of yuan. Grandpa, if you don't accept my gift, I won't accept your red envelope either, Gunning said, and pretended to be displeased. Well, Tang Haifeng hesitated. His red envelope was barely comparable to this Sankai camel. and. I also want to ask Grandpa for a favor. In order to let Tang Haifeng accept her gift, Gunning thought of something to ask him for help. Of course I'll help you, even without this Sankai camel. Tang Haifeng said. The thing is, I established a jewelry company a while ago, and I want to open the branch in City B now. However, I'm not familiar with City B, so I want Grandpa to help me find a store with a good location along with a good manager. Gunning said. The idea just dawned on her, because she was so occupied with work now that she hardly had time to deal with the branch. Therefore, Gunning brought it up now simply because she wanted Tang Haifeng to accept her gift without hesitation. And she planned to use the excuse that she needed their promotion later when she was going to give jewelry to the ladies in the Tang family. No problem. Tang Haifeng answered with alacrity. However, this Sankai Camel, Grandpa. Gunning interrupted him. Do you still regard me as a member of your family? Of course I do. Tang Haifeng immediately said. Then please accept it. If you refuse to do so, I'll leave right away and dump it into a trash can. Gunning acted like a spoiled naughty child. Chapter 420 Let's Have a Fight You although he knew that Gunning said it on purpose, Tang Haifeng was still annoyed. He was really afraid that Gunning would throw this Sankai camel away which would be a great loss. Fine fine, I'll accept it, all right. Tang Haifeng compromised. Gunning then smiled with satisfaction. Seeing Gunning handling Master Tang so well, Tang Jiakai couldn't help admiring her. You're so good at acting. Are you interested in being an actress? I can be your agent. He was joking too. Nonsense. Tang Haifeng said. I think that girl Gu is born to be the big boss. Gunning smiled gently, but didn't say anything. After that, Tang Haifeng was absorbed in the Sankai camel, and kept looking at it from different angles, 
while Tang Jiakai talked with Ganing, or to be more specific, it was more like Tang Jiakai continuously asked Ganing questions, Sister, how are your studies? Sister, which university is your favorite? Sister, why don't you attend a university in City B? Sister, you're so outstanding at such a young age. You're adept at Kung Fu, you know how to cure people, you know stone gambling and antiques, and most importantly, you know business. Sister, would you mind if I followed your lead from now on? Tang Jiakai, enough. Tang Haifeng couldn't stand his noise anymore. Tang Haifeng was displeased, and Tang Jiakai could only close his mouth. Oh, girl Gu, why don't you stay in this house before you leave City B? Tang Haifeng asked Gunning. Thanks, Grandpa, but I think I'll stay in the hotel. Gunning declined politely. She indeed had the idea to have a tour around this grand house, but she didn't want to stay here at night, which wouldn't be convenient or comfortable for her. Come on, sister, there are so many rooms for so few people here. Just stay with us. Tang Jiakai said. Thanks, but I have other things to deal with. Gunning declined again. Since Gunning said so. Tang Jiakai and Tang Haifeng didn't insist. Well, could you visit me more often as long as you're free in City B? I get bored, Tang Haifeng said. Gunning smiled. No problem. However, she would be going home in a few days. Around 5 p.m., Kao Wenxin arrived. Once she walked in, she raised her voice. Tang Jiakai, where are you now? How dare you challenge me? And where is your helper? Hearing the voice, it was apparent that Kao Wenxin had a fiery temper. Gunning figured it out instantly. Tang Jiakai must have challenged Kao Wenxin the moment she had promised to protect him. However, she had only promised to protect him when he was bullied by others. How come it ended up being a challenge? Wasn't he afraid that Gunning might lose? Tang Jiakai really believed in Gunning. Since Gunning was able to kick Zhao Kanglin three meters away, it shouldn't be difficult for her to beat Kao Wenxin. Within seconds, Kao Wenxin had already run into the room. Don't shout in public. It's not polite. Tang Haifeng criticized, but he was already used to it. Nevertheless, Gunning was here today, so Tang Haifeng didn't want to scare her. Kao Wenxin didn't listen to Tang Haifeng, as usual, but she was surprised when she saw Gunning. Tang Jiakai. Is this your girlfriend? She is pretty. No one could blame Kao Wenxin for mistaking Gunning as Tang Jiakai's girlfriend, because Gunning was their age and was a stranger. In addition, it was the first time that Tang Jiakai had brought a girl home, so it had to be his girlfriend. What are you talking about? She's not. Tang Jiakai felt a little embarrassed. Really? Kao Wenxin didn't believe him. She's grandpa's new granddaughter, Tang Jiakai said. Oh, she is Gunning? Kao Wenxin was amazed. Kao Wenxin had heard of Gunning from Tang Haifeng, and she admired Gunning too. The Tang family never treated people differently because of their family background. On the contrary, they were all kind and grateful. Hi. Gunning stood up and greeted Kao Wenxin. Hi, I'm Kao Wenxin. Since you're my grandpa's new granddaughter, then you'll be my younger sister. I'll protect you from now on, Kao Wenxin said and caught Gunning's shoulder like they were already close sisters. Gunning had saved her grandpa, so she was the Tang family's lifesaver. In addition, Gunning was so outstanding at such a young age, which left a good impression on Kao Wenxin. Therefore, Kao Wenxin honestly regarded her as a younger sister. Normally, Gunning was reluctant to be touched by a stranger, but she didn't have the feeling when Kao Wenxin laid an arm on her shoulder. However, before Gunning could say a word, Tang Jiakai opened his mouth with disdain. Interesting. You want to protect her? Do you have the ability? Kao Wenxin was struck dumb for a second, then asked Tang Jiakai with uncertainty. Do you mean your helper is Gunning? Tang Jiakai had just called and told her that he found someone who could beat her, which was a pure challenge in Kao Wenxin's eyes, so she ran to the Tang family's house at once. Yes, you're right. Tang Jiakai said proudly. Kao Wenxin turned to Gunning. Do you fight? It wasn't because Kao Wenxin didn't believe Tang Jiakai, but she respected Gunning, and wanted to hear the answer from Gunning's mouth. Yes, Gunning said with a slight smile. Great, then let's have a fight. If you can beat me, I won't bully Tang Jiakai anymore, Kao Wenxin said. Of course you can reject, I won't force you. Kao Wenxin had a fiery temper but she also had respect towards others and always kept her promises. However, the Tang family was an exception, 
Like Tangjiakai, Tangjiakai was utterly unwilling to practice fighting skills with Kao Wenxin, because he was beaten by Kao Wenxin every time. My lovely sister, my future relies on you now, Tang Jiakai said to Ganing and begged. Ganing gave him a resigned smile. I will do my best. Not only because of Tang Jiakai, but because Ganing also wanted to have a competition with Kao Wenxin.